first fly I'm tying is called a real McCoy AP parachute drake. This fly was designed and originally tied by a guy by the name of Ed McCoy, and he's from uh, northern Michigan. And this fly was designed for the uh, mahogany drake hatch, which I don't know. I have a couple buddies that use that fly. It's available through Orvis or something like that. I've not seen a pattern or a video of how to tie it, so I had to kind of come up with my own design on it. A couple buddies of mine had great success out in the uh, southwest Colorado area fishing it with a brown drake hat. So I'm going to tie it brown drake style instead of using a wine color of mahogany thread. I'm going to use a brown thread. This is some 70 denier UTC. Now the first thing I do is I kind of mark where I want the uh, some moose hair to end by putting my thread where I want to, to, to cut it off so it's easier for me to do. I'm not one of those guys that holds their uh, scissors in their hand because I keep it right there where I'm not going to lose it, right? And this is some moose hair. Now, moose hair is a little different. Uh, this is some long moose body hair. And you, you can go over there and you can find some shorter stuff that's really dark that makes great tails. This is um, really long. When I first started tying this, I bought the original fly through Orvis, or the, the actual pattern through Orvis, and it kind of dissembled it. And I did something that people would uh, question, is that I, I counted hairs. <laughs> so I counted about how many of these are, and, and since I've tied a few of them, I can already kind of feel how many it takes. <laughs> This is an extended body fly. In fact, this is what it looks like if you want to pass it around. And um, that's what makes it exciting to tie, is that you have to tie what I say left-handed. And I'll show you what I mean by that when I get there. Okay, it's about, the tail is about a shank length long, so I measure that and then tie in. Now. I tied some of these the first time that were too long, but the guys that used it said that it was, they were catching it no matter how bad I tied it, <laughs> which is good. That means the trout were ready for it. Can I I'll spin that? counterclockwise to kind of flatten the thread a little bit because on the original pattern the guy uses it kind of as a band and he does a much better job of tying this than I do and this is where I, I say I'm tying left-handed so I'm using my left hand to, to wrap this and it takes a couple up here then I switch again let me have to take my phone out of my pocket it keeps vibrating Ah, uh, okay, try again. And you kind of use your fingers to mark where you want the thread to go. How's that look? Yeah, I'm kind of wrapping the tail and trying to not get too much wrap going. And once you get there. Now, when I first tied this, I used some um, Maxima uh, fishing line, and I put that in there first, and it held the tail up. 
maybe it's a better way, but I thought it added weight. So I, I took that out of the pattern, but I think it's not a bad idea, especially when you're first tying it. It gives you something to tie down to, like you would use a needle on a lot of these extended bodies. Uh, one thing I didn't do on these, I don't think it matters that much, is that you can go in there with some really sharp pointed scissors and and cut out a few of the center fibers to get, you know, a, a little V to it. Okay, that looks good. Now this uses for a wing post deer body hair, white deer body hair. If you if you looked at that thing, it's kind of weird because it's a big fat wing post and it doesn't it's not posted up, you know, so you don't bring it up. You just kind of leave everything flat and then just wrap your uh, hackle around it. This is, you know, if you get lice, they get they have these really nice combs. It's also, I got this at a pet store. It's for, for fleas. A little flea comb. It works pretty good. You guys that tie on Tuesday have maybe seen me tie this once or twice. That's what brought Ed in here. I mean, uh, Randy in here was I want to learn how to tie this one. Hey. How are you? Okay, now this um, wing post is supposed to imitate the the wing too, so I I make it a little longer than I normally would. And tie that in. everything up. And this is kind of nice having a rotary vise. I can bring everything down. And then start wrapping. And if one of these fibers gets in the way, you can just cut it out of there. Like there's one that's not happy. Who's that um, Scottish uh, fly tire that does a lot of videos? That are Davy McPhail. He he says something in his um, tying that I think is very true. You got to kind of tidy everything up a little bit. So I see a couple of stray fibers that I want to get rid of. So dude, better to do it now than to have not done it. Um, it uses two hackle fibers, I mean two hackle feathers, a brown and a uh, grizzly. A great thing about this fly, it doesn't really matter how um, big the hackles are, you don't have to be real accurate because you want it maybe a little bit bigger and then smaller. here a little bit. See, another one of those fibers got in the way, just cut it out. All right, now let's kind of post these up a little bit. Get them up out of the way. One thing I did add to this that you really don't need to because the one that I bought, and maybe that one over there shows it too, is I, I added just a little bit of dubbing to it to make it look prettier. And that's probably more of a artist in me than a fly fisherman, but I think this may add a little bit of weight to it. Now when I put on dubbing, I the, the way I think of it is just 
painting the thread rather than putting so much on that it makes a big noodle. You can always wrap it a few more times. Yeah, I got too much here, but I think it's gonna work. This is some really weird dubbing material. It's really super curly. So it doesn't blend if you're trying to blend it. trying to do here. Make it look more like a okay now. now I'm gonna wrap the hackle. Now when you put the feathers in Think of it that the feathers are all kind of cupped like that. So you want that cup going around the top. So where are we at? Four or five turns. Whatever you like. And they talk about kind of wrapping right on top of each other. And the way I like to finish my parachutes is by going around. And this is where a rotary vise helps me a little bit too. I can see where my hackle turns are. There's a couple of errant feathers, fibers. Cut those babies out. Not cooperating. Okay. Half edge. Okay, so far so good. Haven't cut my thread yet. Oops, just cut my thread. There's a couple of these fibers that don't need to be in there. And with parachutes, it's always good to kind of trim the bottom in case you see anything you don't like. Now, if you saw how that was done, it's Got its wing post is, from what you can see on that one I passed around, the um, pointed ends of the deer body hair remain in place, and these get trimmed really short. few I missed. And when I do a finish like that, <coughs> I like to hit it with a little Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails just to keep that knot from coming undone about four casts in. 
because it wasn't a whip finish, right? It wasn't a whip finish, no. <laughs> Eight thread. Dab that a little bit right there. Be sure and get that right in the eye of the hook, too, so that when you're trying to put the, the tip it on, it's... I have no problem with that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Finish all okay. Up. Because you might give it away sometime, right? <laughs> you want to turn that on. There we go. I'm going to pass this around take a look. Anybody? So when you go on Tuesday? Uh, I'm going to be here Tuesday, but I'm going to start really getting serious on it. I'm looking at the wind and the weather. Now, you got to deal with a little bit of that wind, don't you? Yeah, a little bit. I can't, like Kim said, if you're waiting for a good day to fish in Kansas, you'll wait for a goddamn long day. Yeah. <laughs> Kim says that? Yeah. Yesterday was a good day. Was it? Well, I mean, weather-wise. Yeah. You didn't have to use your AK? Well, that's a different <laughs> issue, guys. That's, that's iced tea, excuse me.